Hey guys, Ron here, and over the past year, I've been making videos where I turn memes into Fakemon. From the Coffin Dance to Rickroll, old and new memes are some of the most challenging things to turn into Pokemon, so you bet I get some kind of sense of accomplishment when I successfully translate them into Fakemon. Although keep in mind, in this video, I'm pretty much using some of the weirdest and abstract memes around. Hopefully you like at least like one of them, because <laughs> they're pretty weird. If you enjoy, make sure to leave a like and let me know which memes you'd like to see in Pokemon form for a potential part 4, but that will only happen if enough of you guys like and share this video. Make sure to check out the previous part if you enjoyed. Now let's see if any of these are realistic enough to believably work in the Pokemon world. Some will be faithful to the memes, while others will adapt their concepts into completely new designs. Let's begin with the highly requested meme, Big Chungus. This frame from Looney Tunes is incredibly famous among the youth. What's funny is that it's uh, literally just a frame of Bugs Bunny mocking Elmer Fudd back when he was depicted as a much more fat man in his earlier appearances. How the image evolved in use through the years is a long and kind of boring story since once it became known as Big Chungus, it doesn't really have any meaning. It's just a funny image. I guess the joke is that it's Big Chungus. It's just that he's there. That's, this is him. So how do I turn this into a Pokemon? Well, it's easier than you think, considering I already made a Bugs Bunny Pokemon in my series where I turn iconic cartoon characters into Pokemon. Carrot is this wise grass type that uses a giant carrot in battle. The thing is that in another video where I take existing Pokemon names and turn them into completely new Fakemon, I gave Harrit an evolution, Carizard. This charismatic wizard rabbit uses his carrot as a staff. So what if we gave Harrit a split evolution? His first evolution is a bit more smart and egotistical, while his other evolution, based on Big Chungus, is relatively slow yet honest. It'll take inspiration from farmers and most importantly hunters, since the whole point in this original cartoon is that Bugs Bunny was making fun of Elmer Fudd. Why not mimic even more? So I'm gonna give him a carrot shotgun. We're starting with a head inspired by the pre-evolved form Harrot, a little more chill and vacant in the brain, then just adding a bit of heft, a bit of chub to the cheeks. Harrot's leaf collar will become almost like a leaf poncho protecting his upper body from the elements when he's working out in the fields or hunting. Now for the piece de resistance, a carrot gun. <laughs> it won't look too much like a working shotgun, just, you know, be in the vague shape of one, so I can still use it in the thumbnail if I wanted to. Just adding the various patterns my Bugs Bunny Pokemon had, but in different configurations so that it looks like this pattern's a mimic the, the look of a belt, refining it and adding Harrod's color scheme before maturing it a bit so that it looks like an evolved palette. Here is Thunderbuss, the working Pokemon, a grass and normal type from Bunny and Blunderbuss, a type of gun. It evolves from Harrod if taught the signature move Carrot Blast, a non-contact physical grass type move that hits all opponents with a base power of 80. Thunderbuss are simple Pokemon. They enjoy working in the fields, growing crops, and consuming the fruit of their labor. They take pride in their work and will defend their produce with their Carrot Piece, which shoots out chunks of baby carrots in all directions. They are rarely intimidated and feel completely confident with their carrot in hand. They have the abilities Long Reach and Cheek Pouch, with the hidden ability Gluttony. Their shiny is a bit closer to Bugs Bunny's colors. I honestly find this dude very endearing and charming. I naturally love the color, so I'm biased but I think this fits in the Pokemon world. I mean, if Bugs Bunny never existed. If Gigantamax Inteleon has a rifle, I'm sure this could pass with how vague the carrot is. Next is probably the most recent meme of all, Dancing Toothless. This recently took the internet by storm. It's a clip from Cass Vanderpoel's uh, How to Train Your Dragon animated recap. And to showcase Hiccup training Toothless, Cass animated Toothless dancing to Driftvale City from Pokemon Black and White. So technically this is a Pokemon meme as well. You see this meme is actually inspired by a way older meme, the Lizard Dance. It's, it's a short clip of a CG lizard dancing to Driftvale City as well. So that will be the partial inspiration for our Fakemon. I'll make a dancing lizard Fakemon that resembles Toothless. It'll look way closer to the exaggerated uh, dancing toothless from the meme. Very long and slender. But we always need a reason for a Pokemon to do what it does and a reason for it to look the way it does. And the shovel snouted lizard looks like it's dancing when it runs around in the desert sand and it has a flat face. So what if the reason our Fakemon has such a flat head is because it does a little rain dance and collects the rain that falls on the shovel like head. That's also why they're so tall. They can live in groups and obviously the taller one will collect the most rain. So we're making a long boy in an awkward dance pose. I honestly might have made it a bit too awkward and stiff, so the final pose will definitely be more appropriate. I gave it a sharp flat snout like the shovel snouted lizard. It has a slight concave bowl-like head to collect water. Again, the rest of the body, like the tail, is taking inspiration from the dancing toothless with a hint of real toothless. The tiny wings are very much dancing toothless inspired, for example, making his eyes less uh, goofy and elongating him. Then throughout the body, you see uh, the scaly theme going on. Every pattern is a U-shape, basically taking inspiration from medieval depictions of dragons. He's just a pure dragon, not a fire dragon or water dragon, so making him look like the essence of what a dragon is, 
I guess, a big medieval reptile. The slight variation in the shades of purple is satisfying to me at least. I don't know about you. Check out Sambasin, the rain dance Pokemon, a dragon type from Samba and Basin. You know, something that contains liquid. Sambasin live in herds. They dance in order to summon rain. When rain begins to fall, they compete to collect water for their families. Rain collects in the basin on their head. The tallest Sambasin can reach above the others and collect more water. They use their shovel-shaped heads to dig trenches and canals to direct water to their colonies. Sambasin are incredibly social and easy to train. A convention of Sambasin trainers is held in Driftvale City every year, where Sambasin show off their moves and compete for the title of Best Dancer. Sambasin is nicknamed Night Fury for their unrelenting nocturnal dancing. They have the abilities Raindish and Dancer. Their shiny is reference to Light Fury. Not my first pick for a meme to turn into a Pokemon since it's a character of an already simple dragon design, so it's hard to add features without making it look like Toothless. But ultimately, I love the colors and energy. Next is the most cursed meme in the last few years, Skibbity Toilet. Since I refuse to actually watch the series this meme comes from, there isn't going to be any deep inspiration. From what I know, it's these source filmmaker animations where these heads inside toilets take over the world, I guess. Their long neck and creepy face is incredibly uh, recognizable to zoomers and kinda ushered in the age of memes that even the youngest of millennials no longer understand in the slightest. I mean, I'm a 1996 baby, I'm pretty much the final group of people considered millennials, and I think this was the first meme I just didn't understand. Is it just the fact that they're creepy and unusual? Do you genuinely like the plot of the web series? It's fine if you watch it ironically, but I'm concerned if children are religiously watching something that has zero point to it. Maybe the allure is seeing how the war between the skibbity toilets and camera heads escalates? I don't know. The point is this won't translate into the best fake mom. I mean, the whole idea of this meme is how unnatural skibbity toilets are, so I'll kind of have to retain their disturbing appearance and expression, but that means the fake mom won't be likable. Let's at least make it clever. It can't just be a head in a toilet, even if it was a ghost type, since a literal toilet in a Pokemon design would never be accepted by fans at least. I'm gonna have to think of something natural that opens and closes like a toilet. I ended up in clam territory, maybe an eel inside a clam? Now it'll be easy to translate the creepy smile and long neck of a skibbity toilet. But I'm not gonna take inspiration from any old clam. A gooey duck is perfect. They have long siphons, basically their mouth, so combining gooey ducks and eel will give us a long fish with a face that sticks out of a clam. I think. I've never done this before. I, uh, I'm scared. So I'm drawing an open clam, making it look a little bit like a toilet lid. Then I'm literally drawing the face of an eel, but with the smirk of a psychopath, connecting it to the clam so it's clearly a gooey duck. And then I noticed that if I give it uh, more human teeth, it felt more like a unique concept instead of a scary eel. Basically the bruxish treatment, bruxish treatment, it's hard to say. Basically where the unique teeth is part of the gimmick. The top fin will mimic human hair, almost like the widow peak of a, of a 40 year old man, but uh, I mean, could be younger. I just assume that's the age of a skibbity toilet head. Now just adding more detail before making the eyes more deranged, but also look closer to the eyes of an eel. I gave it a line on the lip so it kind of looks more like the deformed mouth of a skibbity toilet model, but that goes away in the final design since I think its face is becoming over-designed. When you design a fake mon, you don't want all the detail localized in one location like the face. That's why I'm also adding patterns on the neck to allude to the stretched texture of the skibbity toilet neck. I tried to give it a brown head, but it looks too wrong, so a more appealing blue one at least makes it look somewhat fantastical. You don't want every aspect to be scary. Beware, Psychofin. The disturbing Pokemon a water dark type from Psychotic and Siphon. Psychofin have no bones except for their prominent teeth. They are able to fit inside their shell and surprise unsuspecting victims. They perpetually smile during battle. They are thought to lack empathy, but it is suspected that their form of communication is just lost to humans. They respond to commands and stimuli, but their expression never changes. They can extend their body to attack and retreat into their shell when confronted by a stronger foe. They only make friends with their own kind. They have the abilities Intimidate, Unnerve, and Contrary. This is without a doubt the second creepiest Pokemon I've ever made, behind Plumes. Honestly, this may be creepier. Maybe the only Pokemon I've ever made that I do not want to hang out with. I'm very proud of how I was able to actually make a Skibbity Toilet Pokemon that makes sense though. That's the only good thing that came out of this, just the, just the, just the fact that I know I can turn anything into a fake mon now. Not a good fake mon, but at least a fake mon. Now we're gonna take a look back at an oldie, a classic meme that actually makes sense. 
Is this a pigeon? This young man asking if a butterfly is a pigeon comes from the anime The Brave Fighter of Sun Firebird. This humanoid android Yutaro incorrectly shows off his knowledge of Earth by misidentifying a butterfly. It's a meme used when highlighting various misidentifications in society. Who cares? What if it was a Pokemon? I'm thinking of combining every aspect of this meme and the character that it's based on into a humanoid butterfly pigeon that is inspired by various aliens and mechanical anime heroes. So when I was first designing it, I took some inspiration from the mecha form of Firebird. I was planning on it being a fairy steel type, but then I thought it felt nothing like the meme and clashed with the, the butterfly elements. You see, obviously he wouldn't be pointing at a butterfly, so I thought having butterfly wings on his wrists made sense. It's almost like an inverse of the Greek god Hermes. Instead of wings on the ankles, they're on the wrists. Basically, the aesthetic is a mixture of the magical girl and mecha genre of anime with a bit of Kamen Rider. Notice the wings on the forehead almost look like uh, antennas, but once I went all in on the bird head, I needed the eyes to allude to the glasses in the original meme. Now it finally has a bit of Egyptian god inspiration in them. Basically, this entire mon is the embodiment of flying heroes. I wanted the hands to originally look more like talons, but slowly I realized I wanted him to look gentle, so more fairy-like hands were inevitably implemented. Slowly I made the arms more and more feathered as I leaned into this guy being the embodiment of flight, just adding more feathers and applying delicate bug-like legs. The pattern on the wings are ripped from the butterfly in the meme. I made it so that the color also looks like the color of the guy in the meme too. Now it's all up to determining which colors go where. Pretty much all from the meme. Did I repeat the same thing like three times? Whatever. Say hi to Wingard, the flight Pokemon, a flying type. Originally I was going to name him Wingardian, but that obviously sounds a little bit too close to Wingardium Leviosa. These curious Pokemon fly around the world to learn about anything they can. They rarely retain what they have learned, but are super interested nonetheless. When they see a Pokemon or person in trouble during their travels, they intervene and help. They are masters of the air. Their wings contain a powder that confuses opponents. Humans under the spell of their powder have reported the inability to tell if they were attacked by a flying or bug type Pokemon. The wings on Wingard's wrists flutter as well. They can see miles away, but don't necessarily understand what they are looking at. They are incredibly light, able to sit on their trainer's arms without protest. They have the ability Shield Dust, Oblivious, and the hidden ability Gale Wings. Their shiny is simply cool. We've redeemed ourselves with another guy that I would hang out with. Just the idea of this creature perching on your arm sounds hilarious and dreamlike to me. And if this video was dreamlike to you, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see a part 4, and watch the previous part if you haven't. Make sure to check the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, which you can also do by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Make sure to follow me on Twitter where I show sneak peeks of these designs, and I'll see you guys very soon.